Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcasting to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories. Tensions peaked this morning when seven Israelis sustained injuries when a rocket that was fired from Gaza struck their home in central Israel. The United Nations Human Rights Council has once again condemned the Jewish state for what the UN agency referred to as Israel's apparent intentional use of unlawful, lethal and other excessive force against civilian protesters in Gaza. The U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces SDF proclaimed the capture of the last territory that was held by the Islamic State in the eastern part of the war-torn country, effectively eliminating its role over the self-proclaimed caliphate. Palestinian Islamists launched a rocket early this morning from the Gaza Strip towards Israel's central communities. After rocket alert sirens were sounded across the Hefer Valley and Sharon regions, which are located north of Tel Aviv, the IDF spokesperson's unit announced that one rocket was identified to have been launched from the Gaza Strip. Shortly thereafter, it has been confirmed that a residential structure in the Jewish community of Mishmeret in the Sharon Plain sustained a direct hit. As a result, two women sustained moderate wounds, while another five residents of the building sustained light injuries, including a three-year-old toddler and an 18-month-old infant. כוחות מדה ישר הגיעו, הוציאו את הפצועים החוצה זה ופינו אותנו מהבית כי חשבו שעדיין לא בדקו את הבלוני גז מה אם הם בסדר או לא בסדר והרחיקו את כל, ה... כל התושבים עד המקום איפה שאנחנו נמצאים כרגע Meanwhile, the rocket fire this morning came after a wave of attacks from the Hamas-controlled territory over the weekend, during which Palestinians hurled dozens of explosive devices towards the Gaza-Israel border fence and separately launched a number of incendiary balloon clusters from the enclave into Israeli territory. In response, the IDF spokesperson's unit said that an aircraft targeted two terror cells that launched the airborne weapons towards Israel. Furthermore, an Israeli aircraft bombed two Hamas observation posts in the southern Gaza Strip and an Israeli tank targeted two Hamas military posts in the southern part of the enclave. In related news, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is on an official state visit to the United States, announced that he will cut his trip short following what he referred to as a criminal attack on the state of Israel. <laughs> ראש השב"כ וראש המל"ל. הייתה כאן התקפה נפשעת על מדינת ישראל, ואנחנו נגיד בעוצמה. לאור האירועים הביטחוניים, החלטתי לקצר את הביקור בארצות הברית. בעוד שעות אחדות אפגש עם הנשיא טראמפ, מיד לאחר מכן אשוב לארץ כדי לנהל את הפעולות שלנו מקרוב. The Prime Minister's decision effectively cancels his participation at the annual conference of the powerful pro-Israeli Jewish American lobby, APAC, where he was scheduled to deliver an address. Now to Geneva, where prior to the escalation over the weekend, the United Nations Human Rights Council has once again condemned the Jewish state for what the UN agency referred to as Israel's apparent intentional use of unlawful, lethal and other excessive force against civilian protesters in Gaza. Despite the agency's clear bias, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights voiced regret that Israel shunned the report and called for the Israeli so-called perpetrators of violations in the Hamas-controlled enclave to face justice. The end of this month will mark one year since the start of demonstrations which, as the Council's Commission of Inquiry reported, have been met with deadly disproportionate force by the Israeli security forces, leading to a very high toll of killings and injuries. I was disappointed to see the immediate dismissal of that report by Israel without addressing any of the very serious issues raised. The condemnation came on the final day of a four-week session during which the Geneva Forum adopted the Resolution on Accountability that was brought forward by Pakistan on behalf of the Organization of the Islamic Conference. 23 states voted in favor, including China, Cuba, Saudi Arabia and Somalia, among others, 
Eight voted against, including Australia, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, Fiji, Ukraine and Brazil, and 15 member states abstained. While the internationally recognized terror group Hamas welcomed the UN resolution as a step in the right path towards supporting Palestinian rights, the Israeli foreign ministry in Jerusalem condemned the UN agency for repeating its absurd and hypocritical ritual of creating a commission of inquiries singling out Israel, whose fightings against Israel are predetermined, and then adopting them while ignoring the reality on the ground. That said, the foreign ministry noted its satisfaction with the fact that the moral majority of the countries did not endorse the resolution, which in effect provides the biased council with a clear vote of no confidence on its report. Now to Israel's northern neighbor Syria, where the US-backed Syrian Democratic Forces known as the SDF proclaimed the capture of the last territory that was held by the Islamic State in the eastern part of the war-torn country, effectively eliminating its rule over the self-proclaimed caliphate. In the presence of US diplomatic and military officials, the commanding general of the SDF alliance announced the accomplishment yet insisted that the war is not over. <laughs> The U.S. State Department Special Envoy for Syria joining the celebrations, referring to the successful operation against the Islamic State as a clear indication of U.S. commitment to the global coalition to defeat the extreme Muslim group. Delivers a crushing strategic blow and underscores the unwavering commitment of our local partners and the global coalition to defeat ISIS. Originally an offshoot of Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State captured large swaths of Iraq and Syria starting from 2014. Following two separate coalitions to defeat the extreme Muslim group, one headed by the United States and the other by Russia, the Islamic State was slowly beaten back to the village of Baghuz. SDF fighters who besieged Baghuz for weeks, while U.S. aircraft pounded from above, paraded in memory of 11,000 SDF comrades killed since the battle against the Islamic State started. Meanwhile, officials in Damascus believe that the defeat of the Islamic State will encourage the Kurdish forces of the SDF to enter into negotiations with the Assad regime to reach an accord that will once again unify the whole of Syria. Despite the success in defeating the Islamic State, Syrian officials believe that both sides are keen on resolving their differences. According to a Syrian political analyst, U.S. support for the Kurds may not be enough to form their own state in northeastern Syria because of Turkish objections, and it may serve the Kurdish leadership in their attempts to maximize their own interests and gain some autonomy in future negotiations with Damascus. Let's say U.S. backing is not enough to make to have a country. So, for me, I think that Kurds they will begin to negotiate with uh, Damascus, with Syrian government, and try to get uh, some rights of uh, non-central administration. Of course, here numbers, they are not important, because uh, if you say that there is an American base in Syria, so this means that you still uh, giving the cover for SDF, for the Kurdish uh, militias to uh, keep control of this area. I think U.S. will stay and wait the end of the negotiations between Kurdish uh, uh, leaders and Syrian government. While in the past Kurdish officials have indicated the desire to reach an accord with the Assad regime, Kurdish sources did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment. Thank you for joining us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto, have a good evening, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.